Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters in our common humanity, uh, thank you for inviting me. Don't worry, I've not heard of most of you either. Uh, but I'd be one of your token papists for the evening. Um, and I may I say it's a great honour as well as a pleasure to be here and to speak in this place. I do have to admit at first, however, that when I saw this motion put before me uh, to debate, my heart sank. And I think it behoves to note, just on the start, on its own, the motion in front of us is a spectacularly daft one. I agree, actually, with the second speaker on that one. It's so hopelessly vague that it in no way establishes what it's actually meant to be for. This house would be glad to have gay parents. Well, as opposed to what? As opposed to no parents? Well, in that case, the motion's obvious. We might as well all go home. But clearly, that can't be that easy. When I read the subject blurb in the union's letter to me, which uh, qualified the question slightly better, it's, it put the question like this. Is it wrong to portray a homosexual relationship as an equivalent environment in, in which to raise a child? Now, the House is, is evidently imagining itself as a child, remarking whether he or she would be equally glad to have gay parents, i.e. two men or two women, we assume, as to have a mother and a father. And we have to, if we're going to make an equitable and productive comparison, we have to assume ceteris paribus, you know, that all other things being equal, so in both cases there's equal love and equal relational stability, which is why I, I don't think that uh, the lifestyle choice of various people are relevant, that the House would be equally happy to be parented by two men or two women as opposed to a mother and a father. So this is not, I repeat not, a motion on whether you love or affirm people who experience same-sex attraction. And it's not worded or meant as such. You know, if the first speaker had wanted a motion that this House loves gay people, then he should have introduced it. But that's not what he's done. Um, if he had, I would not be here on this side of the House. I'd be on his side. There's, this is not also a debate about same-sex marriage. There were portions of the second speaker's spe speech which were practically, I have to say, irrelevant. What I intend to argue then is very simple, given what we're actually discussing, that the proposing side this evening cannot but fail to prove what they really should be making a case for. For make no mistake, the burden of proof is on their side. Their job was to show, is to show, an equivalence between tho these two parenting arrangements and, that to the and I'm going to try to show that to the contrary, because men and women bring unique contributions to their children by virtue of their sex, as men, or as women, sorry, not right now, <coughs> to the upbringing of their children, the ideal, the ideal situation in which a child may be raised is by a mum and a dad. And this is, no, sorry, this is not to disparage same-sex parents, or it certainly ought not to be, whatever else anyone else says in this debate. As far as I'm concerned, that should not be the case. Any more than single parents must be somehow harming their children, as our first speaker historically claimed we must assert. No one's claiming that the children of gay parents must turn out gay. This is absurd, and it's insulting to suggest that that's what we have to argue in order to argue against this motion, as it's clearly worded. It's simply to say that whatever love and else they may bring to a child's life, same-sex parents cannot bring the complementarity of a male and a female, of a mother and a father. That is surely all we're debating this evening. And if we want to debate something else, we should have worded it as such. This, in my opinion at least, ought to be a matter of empirical study and not sentimentality. If this is going to be a substantive debate rather than a moralistic exercise in who can be more homophile than thou, then no, sorry, then we can't simply engage in sentimentality. We have to look at the evidence. And it's notable that throughout both the spe speeches we've heard so far, not a single study has been actually cited, not a single s actual study has been discussed. Well, I want to, ladies and gentlemen, and even though we've not discussed this so far, I think it behoves us, not right now, I think it behoves us to discuss those studies which are suggested in other debates in favour of the, the kind of thing that the motion suggests tonight. So we've got, for example, the US National Longitudinal Lesbian Family Study, Psychological Adjustment of 17-Year-Old Adolescents, that's by Gartrell and Boss in Pediatrics in 2010, if you want to look it up. Uh, or How Does the Gender of Parents Matter by Biblas and Stacey in the Journal of Marriage and Family, that's in 2010 in the Journal of Marriage and Family. Um, however, these are seriously flawed. These kind of studies are seriously flawed. For example, the first one was based on the self-reported results of an unrepresentative sample of lesbian mothers of 70, 18 ages. And that's hardly a sufficient data set, is it? Or, for example, uh, the second study that I mentioned um, didn't actually discuss uh, male couples of parents at all. Uh, has scar there's scarcely any research, actually, when it comes to two men bringing up children as opposed to two women bringing up children. The, the point being in both, there are two small data sets. We don't have enough, not right now. Uh, may, maybe later if I have the time, but I've only got five minutes. There are so many other studies that have been cited, and we can actually uh, 
discuss them later if actually the other two speakers do discuss them. But every single one of the studies you'll ever hear about, every single one has either too small a data set or has methodological flaws. For example, they ask the parents themselves. They don't ask the children, most of them. They, they, no, in fact, all of them. They don't ask the children until they ask the parents. Now, what are you going to say? You, you're, you're, someone comes up to you and says, how's your children doing? Are you going to say, well, they're doing terribly badly, actually? No, you're going to say, of course, they're doing fine. That's not rigorous methodology, ladies and gentlemen. It's not good enough. But actually, I'm not going to claim that the opposite side has done any better. And actually, one of the largest uh, surveys is actually the Regner study, which has already been mentioned. But that only actually only looked at two. They only actually found two people in a, in a series of, I think it was around 300 people, two people who had actually had a relationship, a, a parent, two parents who are of same sex, over their entire child, 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 um, childhood. Now, that's not good enough either. That's a very small data set. Most of the uh, people that they discussed were people who had had a gay parent in some kind of lifestyle, but that's not good enough. So the point is, neither side of us this evening, if we're going to look at life outcomes purely, can claim that there is evidence that same-sex parents do just as well as opposite sex parents. I just don't think that there is any scientific evidence of that. And if you want to look at review of gay parenting literature, um, then I would go into if I have it here. Uh, Lauren Marks in Social Science uh, Research, 2012, he, go, he deals with the whole uh, set of literature that we have and shows that, in fact, none of it is good enough. So this conclusion, one way or the other, is simply not scientifically warranted. We don't have enough data, and we have various limitations on everything that we've ever talked about. But however, I think the one thing we can talk about, even though all of these problems pre prevent us from engaging in scientific generalizations, I think we can talk about, nonetheless, thank you very much, I think we can talk about the social science and biological studies that prove that opposite sex parents, in other words, a mother and a father, bring unique contributions to their children that same-sex parents, by virtue of the fact they are same-sex, cannot bring. No. So again, fathers, uh, so for example, uh, Canadian scholar Andrea Doucette has explored this uh, question in her book, Do Men uh, Mother? Her extensive research with 118 male primary caregivers, including stay-at-home dads, led her to conclude that fathers don't mother. What does that mean? Well, basically it means that, for example, the two styles of parenting that uh, mothers and fathers bring to each other are fundamentally different. Fathers tend to be much more risk-taking. They tend to throw the child up in the air. Uh, they tend to be uh, much more adventurous. They tend to be physical. Now, this is true. This is a generalisation. It's not true of all couples by any means, but we are talking about generalities here. That's a fundamentally different form of parenting to mothers. Mothers tend to be much more nurturing. They tend to be much more careful. They tend to be much more empathetic. Both are quite important. Both teach children something in and of themselves. And that sort of thing is very helpful later on. Uh, when fathers respond to children's emotional hurts, they differ from mothers in their focus on fixing the problem, rather than addressing the hurt feeling. That might not seem particularly important, but it very much is we are talking about contributing to the growth of how a child not only relates to their parents, but how they relate to themselves and how they treat their own problems. These are things which are fundamentally different. Our species has evolved with ma male and female complementarity in parenting for a very good reason. It has a social effect. It has a, a personal effect. I'm actually running out of time. I've only got three minutes. But I'll, I'll refer to you to... Uh, Maslow Coffin uh, Kudkansky in 2009. Uh, in Ch we've got Child Trends, the Brookings Institution, the Woodrow Wilson School for Public International Affairs, the Centre for Law and Policy. There's a, what, to use a Chestertonian phrase, a choking cataract of evidence of the unique contributions that male and female parents bring to their children. And whatever we say about same sex parenting, one half of that cannot be given. So I'll simply say, I mean, the, no. The journalist Matthew Paris, himself gay, has said, I'm glad I had a mother and a father, and that is after childhood. I was to spend my life among both men and women, and as men and women are not the same, I would have missed something if I had not learned first about the world from and with both a woman and a man in the love of both. Rupert Everett, a uh, gay actor who blazed a trail for gay actors when he came out 20 years ago, said last year of his mother, Sarah, she thinks children need a, a father and a mother, and I agree with her. Um, we may charitably assume um, that when he said, I can't think of anything worse than being brought up by two gay dads, that he was being hyperbolic. I, don't think, uh, I think I can think of a lot worse things. Elton John, my fellow Watfordian, uh, the gay icon at capital of England, actually, and George Michael, Jerry Halliway, the boys from Blue. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an it, you, you, think, you wonder if there's a pattern. Anyway, um, Elton John, himself a same-sex parent, just recently, in the last week, had his second surrogate child, um, said of his first surrogate child that he was sorry that he would not experience having a mother. Now, are these guys self-hating homophobes? Or do they intuit what we all basically perceive and what social science and biology empirically show us? Uh, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll wrap up now. That there are things that only a mother can give us. There are things that only a father can give us. That there, are only th there are things that cannot be provided 
by a member of the opposite sex. And indeed, ladies and gentlemen, if you had what most people would re recognise as the blessed being brought up by your natural father and mother who loved you, ask yourself which of your parents' contributions to your upbringing was interchangeable with a member of the opposite sex? Which could have you have done without in favour of another one? If you really want to say that you would prefer, that you would be glad to have gay parents in that sense. So for all these reasons, right, I haven't got enough time to go further, but from the lazily ambiguous t no, uh, nature of the motion to the unproved and indeed demonstrably false nature of what is truly being claimed by the proposers, if they, ha if they are going by their own motion, I think there is easily sufficient reason to reject this motion, and I commend you to do so, if for no other reason than to show that this kind of debate ought to be based on evidence and it ought not to be based on sentimentality. And indeed, to do so is to make a travesty of what is an important discussion and one which we should do with sensitivity and love for everyone involved. And I hope we can at least agree on that. Thank you.